I'd like to hear, as we've been journeying along, guys, what are you learning? What are you learning out in the garden? What's patience. patience? That's an important one. What are you learning as we're out there digging through glass, building and establishing soil? What what are you uh, what's just something you've learned? I want to hear from you today. Just like in rotten ground. Okay, we're repurposing rotten ground. You know, somebody told us that it really was a junkyard. Well, when I was out there with uh, the tractor, we hit this uh, this break reservoir thing, just solid piece of iron. And then we hit this uh, big piece of a bike, and I'm like, this really was a junkyard. <laughs> I mean, like, it is full of junk. About tore my tiller up plowing that bottom level. What else, what else are you guys learning? What are you seeing, hearing, feeling God's revealing to you? This is like Fly. flies. 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 You're seeing some flies. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we are. Just what like do you in, see? Uh, just like in life, you gotta like rewire your brain to you know, get good habits. You gotta pick out and change the bad habits. Mm -hmm. know, replace them with good ones. Yep, you do. Reap what you sow. Yep, okay. yep. Dig at it for a moment, guys. Any anybody else? What are you learning? Once you start digging deep into some some areas, you're going to find some stuff that you may not like <laughs> that you have to deal with. That's exactly right. Exactly right, Brian. Yeah, yeah. The di the more you dig, it can get a little discouraging sometimes, right? Like I I literally was out there. Uh, was it Tuesday we were here? Yeah, Tuesday. And uh, we were going through there, and uh, John, John and I were down there on that lower end, and it started going, pow, 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 just hitting really hard. And then there was this like sewer pipe looking thing uh, came out of the ground, and I'm like, man, it's gonna just tear the tractor up. And then I saw gashes in my tires, and when I got home, I'm like, man, you, you dig down, there's some junk in there. How many know we got to deal with that junk? Yeah? Can't just say, well, let's just gloss it over. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 um, I'm I, tempted just to say, let's just put a whole lot more soil on top of that and bury it and forget about it. Can't. You can't do that, can you? Still there. Still there. And although we can repress those things, and I'm not going to get all psychological on us here, but... I was a psychology major. You can push those things down, but they're going to revisit you. Uh, the only hope for the issues going on, the, the junk that doesn't belong, the sin in our life, is the only hope for any of us is for us to expose it. Amen. Dig it out and deal with it. Look at it in the face. I always tell people, you know, I can deal with awkward. I can deal with uncomfortable. I can deal with, I don't want to see it, talk about it. I, I've, I've just learned in life that I'd rather punch awkward in the face than walk away from it and then live in turmoil about all these accusations and condemnation that surround when we get into this thought life of, you know, things get awkward with one another or people we know or in relationships and it gets awkward. It gets a little difficult. Well, it's better to talk it through and get on the other side of things. Don't let the, the, the sun go down on your wrath. Um, we need to deal with those things. What else are we learning? Anybody else want to... I've got a scripture from 2 Corinthians I want to read, but I wanted to give us a time to... Anybody else learning anything? Something you're noticing out there? Patience. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank uh, you guys that have really been busting it out there. Um, I'm not going to start calling names right now, but uh, you know who you are. Some of you that have just been staying late and really working hard on it. Uh, I, I am going to say to us all that um, I really want to encourage us to what 
in whatever way you can be involved. Uh, I think we had, I don't know, Brian, when we all stood several weeks ago, about how, what kind of percentage would you say of us stood? How many of us stood up and say we're with it? We're ready to roll with it? Six. Six? And I've seen more than six out there at any given time really helping. And, uh, but I want to encourage us that this is, far more, this is far more at stake here than just putting together a nice little garden for the rescue mission. What we're wanting to do is learn to get to know one another around that garden. We're wanting to get to know the God of creation a little bit more out in that garden. When it all boils down to it, guys, here's what we're after. We want to know more about God and want to, want to know more about one another. So the garden's just a great way to gather around people. And then in the, in the process, we see an abundance. We see that God really does take care of our needs when we take care of soil. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you've got your, your Bibles. Um, again, this God who reveals himself in creation... We find so many references to creation in God's Word. It's just always hitting on something of the, creative, the creation process and natural process of life. Let's start in uh, chapter 9, verse 6 of 2 Corinthians. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves, what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly. Brothers, I want you to hear this today. Can I preach to you a little bit at 8 o'clock in the morning? God is able to bless you abundantly. You need to hear that today again. You say, well, I've read that before, Pastor. Well, hear it again. It's about the third, fourth, fifth, tenth time I hear something. Are you guys this way with the Word of God? All of a sudden it goes ding, ding, ding. Maybe God's talking to me. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. Man, that's good news. Now, as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower. Notice that God supplies seed to the sower. Our God in His creation, provides for seed. What we often do is instead of investing that seed, we waste it. Um, It's frustrating to have a field, but have no seed. God has blessed us, uh, guys, with $4,000 worth of seeds. Isn't it amazing? That we're seeing and have seen the fulfillment of this scripture. That all of a sudden God touches the heart of a manager at Home Depot and he walks in Matthew's office and gives him $4,000 worth of seeds. You say, oh, well, that's just a chance. No, I don't think so. I think it's just continually fulfilling God's passionate desire for our lives. He wants to prove to us that his word is forever established. So that he supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. How many of you like to be generous? Anybody, have you received the blessing of that? I'll tell you what sucks is when you can't be generous. One of the curses of being impoverished is you can't be generous. Are you guys with me right there? It, it, I, I've been in the place in my life, guys. Um, you know, I know some of you have been to the farm and you think Pastor Phil's just a millionaire. I'm not. I can assure you I am no millionaire. But I've given away millions of dollars in my lifetime. While I was in Germany, I gave away almost $3 million a year. Let me ask you a question. Who can give away millions of dollars? 
What kind of person can give away millions of dollars? A generous person. Yeah, but specifically. Yeah, but specifically, a millionaire. I just told you I wasn't a millionaire, but I've given away millions of dollars. Isn't that interesting? I don't own things. And when you're not an owner, you can be blessed to be a steward. When your fists are not clenched all the time and you're not owning things, here's the beautiful thing. If, you're, if you'll have this posture, guys, and I, I'm just asking you to hear me say this one more time. I know you've heard religious people say it, but hear this preacher one more time say this to you. If your hands will go from here to here to serving, God can touch open hands. He cannot bless clenched fists. You know why most people are not blessed? Is they simply, where they are, are not willing to open their hands and in the context of their own life, give what they have. Such as you have, you give it. You say, I don't have much. Well, such as you have, give it. Start where you are. And if you'll start where you are, God will start with you where you are. But what we're not willing to do is, you know, my pastor used to say, God is not interested in what you would do with what you don't have. And so he's not even interested in that conversation. You say, well, you know, if I had, if I had millions of dollars, I'd give, I'd give a lot of people. I hear people say all the time, if I win the lottery, man, I'm going to bless this person and give to that. No, you won't. You're lying to yourself. You know what most millionaires and people that win millions of dollars do? They squander it all and they're broke within a few years. Jim Rohn used to say, if you win a million dollars, you better become a millionaire quick or you'll lose it all. See, God wants us to be abundantly blessed. His desire is for our lives, for us to be able to be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That you're able to put things in people's hands and they give God praise for it. What's awesome in my lifetime is I've had the opportunity to help people in significant ways. And I see them glorify God. Now, it's, it's okay for them to say, thank you, Pastor Phil, for obeying God. But can I tell you something? All, we can, all that can ever be accredited to us is obedience. Amen. It's only God who gives seed to the sower. Amen. All we do is obey God. Austin has a wonderful voice and ability to play the guitar. And, and, and God's just going to continue to bless that, bro. As you continue to exercise that gift, God's going to continue to bless if glory goes to Him. But, but hear, me, hear me this morning if nobody else hears me. The moment it becomes Austin's show, you're going to lose everything and the meaning of why He gave it to you. Amen. Don't forget that. That's the truth. That's a word for you today. Guys, God's given you great talents and abilities and giftings. But the question is, are you sowing and giving right where you're at with what you have? So there's, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Remember, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows generously will reap generously. I, uh, I want to encourage us, brothers, to sow into one another. Some of you, as I've been talking, all you've been thinking about is dollars. And I want to encourage you today, there's three, there's three areas of our lives that we can sow in. And it's the three big ones. Your time, your talent and your treasure. And guys, in your time, your talent, and your treasure, if you will sow generously 
of your time. A lot of people say, well, I don't have time. Um, well, we, if we're honest, we take time for what we want to do. If we're really honest, you do exactly what you want to do. Am I right? If you want to make time for something, you do. And I want to encourage you to make time for one another first. Hear one another. Listen to one another. Don't wait to talk. Listen. Listen to one another. How awesome would it be if we really started listening to one another? You know what? The, the culture we're in is the culture of I told them. <laughs> we don't need more people that tell. We need people that listen. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Slow to become angry. I've found that if you listen to people, you'll understand them. You'll be a lot slower to get angry. Y'all just hear what I said? Did you just catch that? If you'll be slower to speak, you'll be slower to become angry. And if we'll invest our time in one another, invest our time in the people around us, invest our talent. Some of you have got hidden talents. Maybe, um, like, brother, tell me your name one more time. Anthony. Anthony, I didn't know you played the drums. But you don't just play the drums, you play the drums really well. Because I'm a drummer, and I heard you. I was with you, man. I was with you on every beat. I felt it. Because I'm a, I'm a percussionist. Play professionally. Love percussion. And Anthony, you were playing, man. And you know what? There's some of you here that are here today. There's things inside of you that nobody knows about. But whatever talent you have, it won't grow if it's not sown generously. Whatever talent's inside of you right now, if you'll sow it generously into other people, God will bless it. And then there's your treasure. There is your money. There is what the Lord has put in your hands to invest, take care of your bills, to be faithful with. If you'll sow generously your treasure, God will bless you generously with more than you can contain. Amen. Exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Amen. If you'll sow generously. I want us to stand today because we're going to head outside and... Uh, Got a few projects for those of you that want to join us today. Uh, invest some of your time. Um, we're going to be uh, we're going to be sowing seed really soon, guys. Out in that, we're going to start with the keyhole garden. Um, Jay, how are we on the A frame? Man, I'm working five doubles. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, we'll we'll work on that A-frame. Jay's going to help us get this. Uh, it's a little measuring uh, tool that we'll use to uh, measure out contour lines on the land. And um, so there's so many things. So many of you guys have the ability to do. I want to encourage you to sow generously, um, invest in one another. Um, listen to one another. Invest in one another by listening and caring for one another here, right now. Um, God, God will bless that. He really will. And Father, I thank you for my brothers today. I thank you, Lord, that you have provided seed to each one of us. We all have a pocket full of seeds. Um, we all have some things that you put in our hands. And and sometimes we get frustrated because we think it's not enough. But I know that you're able to take such as we have and make more of it. Um, and I just thank you today that you're able to take uh, even small things and turn them into great and mighty things. And I, I just pray for everyone here today that you reveal your heart to us today, Lord, that you want to bless us in abundant ways so that we can give generously to those around us so that they may worship God and give thanks to you. And uh, Lord, just thank you for my brothers today. Thank you for this opportunity to, uh, yeah, um, redeem land and to clean up glass and trash out of the soil. And um, thank you, Lord, that uh, redemption is coming to this little small piece of land that we're going to be faithful with. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to serve my brothers today. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.